There are three distinct ways to create scroll-based and scroll-triggered animations with Framer Motion. With just these three tools and a bit of creativity, you can build just about anything that you want. Let's take a look at how all three of them work. For our first example, I just have some text that is currently hidden behind this blue square, that's what we're seeing right here, and I just want this blue square to fade away whenever this is in the viewport. The easiest way to do that is just to take this div and turn it into a motion.div. Motion is just an import from Framer Motion, we should be able to see that up here. We'll then set an initial state on our div, in this case of opacity one, and then just using the while in view prop, change that to an opacity of zero. With just those basic changes, we should see that this fades out whenever it enters the screen, either from the top or from the bottom. But we'll notice that this happens really quickly, right? Like right as the top of the box or the bottom of the box starts to enter the screen. The easiest way to fix this is by opening up the viewport prop and then passing in an amount of all. This will just tell the animation to only run whenever the entire element enters the screen, either from the top or from the bottom. You can also be more specific about this by adding a margin offset. So we could say a margin of minus 200 pixels. And now we'll see that this has an additional negative 200 pixels of offset before it actually animates in or out. And we can also tell this animation to only run once using once true. And now after this fades in one time, it will never fade out again. One additional quick little tip for this is that we can hook into these enter and exit events using callback functions. To do that, we just need to use the on viewport enter and on viewport leave events. And these are just logging enter and exit. Opening up my console and scrolling, we should see the enter and exit logs happening as I scroll up and down. Quick note for anyone interested, I do not take any sponsors on this channel, but I do run a website called hover.dev. Hover is a library of animated and interactive UI components built specifically for frame or motion. If you're trying to get better with animations, I think you will find a lot of great resources here. Anyways, back to the video. Now, sometimes you actually need multiple different events to fire. And for that, we're gonna use the use in view hook. For this example, I have something very similar, but I just have three divs that are each one third of the width instead of the entire width. Obviously we could do this the same way for this example, but you know, I didn't want anything too particularly complicated. You can kind of see that these are separate, I guess, if I just turn this to say red or something. And now we'll see that we have three separate boxes. And the first thing that I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create a ref up at the top using the real React use ref hook and add that to our wrapping div. So, so this could be like an entire container section or whatever you want it to be. It can be a completely separate element from what you actually want to animate. We just need some reference that we actually want to come into the screen so that we can pass it into the use in view hook, which also comes from frame or motion. The use in view hook will take this reference as well as some parameters. So I will pass in the amount all similar to like what we did just a second ago. And we can actually see this value changing if I just console log it with a use effect. So now as I scroll up and down, we should see the element is in view, the element is not in view, and we can do whatever we want now with this Boolean value. In my case, I'm just going to take all three of these divs and I'm going to change them for motion divs. The far left and far right one will transform on the Y axis minus 100%. The middle one will transform 100%. And with all of that together, we'll get something that looks like this. So both of them stagger and all of this is just based on one Boolean toggle. You can change however many things that you want. It's essentially just using a Boolean check to actually fire whatever code you want to fire. Last but not least, we have the use scroll hook. The use scroll hook is pretty powerful. So we're actually going to see three different examples of how we can use it. For the most basic possible example, I'm just going to make sure that I've imported use scroll up at the top and I'm going to instantiate it like this, use scroll. This is going to give you back four different possible values. So scroll Y progress, scroll X progress, and then just scroll X and scroll Y. Scroll Y progress and scroll X progress are just a value between one and zero of how far you've scrolled up or to the left and right on the screen. And then scroll X and scroll Y are the absolute values. All that I need for this exact example is scroll Y progress. And we can actually see this value change using the use motion value event hook. So use motion value event, will just take in a motion value and then what event you want to listen for, in my case, change. And in this case, I'm just locked logging out the latest value. So while I'm way up at the top, it should be around zero. And then as I get all the way down to the bottom, it will be one or close to one at least. If the value that we actually need is just between zero and one, then we can just pass that directly in. I already have my motion div right here and I'm going to set a scale X equal to whatever our scroll Y progress value is. And now we should see that the scales from zero to 100% as we scroll up and down. This could be used for like, you know, a reading thing on a blog post or whatever you want it to be. And we can of course also animate different values by just using the use transform hook. An example of that might be something like this. So maybe we want to animate the background color. We'll use the use transform hook 
look, this also comes from frame or motion. We'll pass in our scroll Y progress, which is a value between zero and one. And we want to animate that between straight white and then this bluish color. We can then just take our background color and pass that in as well. And now up at the top, we should see that it's right around white. And as we scroll down, it slowly turns to blue. By default, the use scroll hook is going to be based on the viewport scroll as a whole, which might not, and probably most of the time actually is not exactly what we want. What we really want is to listen to a specific element scroll position in the viewport. So in this case, I'm talking about this blue square that I have in the middle here. Fortunately, we have a way to handle that as well. So over in my code, I'm going to create a ref. I'm just going to call it target ref. We'll say ref is equal to target ref like this. We'll then define our use scroll the same way we did just a second ago, but we can also pass in now our target reference as a value called target, and then just pass that in our target ref. We can use the use transform hook again to turn this into an actually usable value. So let's say rotate in this case. So whenever scroll Y progress is between zero and one, I want to transform between zero degrees and 180 degrees. We can pass that into our divs style prop like this. And we should now see that as the element is entering the screen, it starts to rotate, and then right before it exits, it ends its rotation. One additional thing that you might think as you're doing your animations like this is this might not be the exact behavior that you actually want. By that, I mean this only starts its rotation as it fully enters the screen and animates until it gets all the way up to the top like this. Maybe you actually want the animation to start all the way as it's entering and run until it's completely exited out of the top or just when it's out of the top or you can come up with as many examples as you want. And the way that we do that is using the offset value, which we can pass to use scroll like this. Now offset is a list of strings defining the positions of the elements where they enter and exit the screen or the viewport. The first being the beginning position of your animation and then the end position of your animation. It's a little bit confusing to describe before we actually see it. So I'm just gonna add a basic example and then we'll walk through it. So I'm going to say start end and then end start. And if we move slowly now, we should see that our animation starts right as the box is entering the screen and runs all the way until it exits out of the top. And the way that you can read this is something like this. So start is referencing the top in this case of our element and end is referencing the very bottom of our viewport. So we're saying we want to start this animation whenever the start or the top in this case, because we're scrolling in the Y axis of our element meets with the end of our viewport. We want it to run until the end of our element or the bottom meets with the start of our viewport or up here at the top. So one more time slowly, the start of our element meets with the end of the viewport and runs until the end of the element meets with the start of the viewport. We can look at another quick example. So I'll just paste this in. Let's try start, start, end, start. I'll let you think about this for a second. If you want, pause the video now, if you wanna try and figure out what you think this is actually gonna do. Three, two, one, okay, time is up. Let's take a look. And what we're gonna see is that the animation only starts whenever the very top of our element meets with the top of the screen. So the start of our element meets with the start of the screen, and it's going to run until the end of our element meets with the start of the screen, AKA it will do its full rotation just up at the top. This can be super, super useful if you're just trying to fade out at the top of the screen or scale out at the top of the screen, whatever it may be. Additionally, you can even pass in single values like center, oops, typo, like center. And now this will start whenever it meets with the center of the screen. Additionally, you can pass in more values like percentages or even pixels. So we could say something like 25% meets with the start and we can see what that does. So it's actually gonna wait until it's 25% past and then it's gonna rotate. A bunch more fun stuff that you can do with this. I will let you play with that yourself. Moving on to the last example. So sometimes the scroll container you wanna to listen to is not actually the pages scroll, but some additional element scroll. In this case, I just have this horizontal scroll container with a box in the middle. And we can take a look at how we can create an animation for something like this. So for my example code over here on the left, I already have two refs set up. One for my container element, which has the overflow X of scroll. And then another one for the element itself to start. I'll just create a call to the use scroll hook per usual. We'll then pass in our reference for our container this time, as opposed to just our target. Of course, we need to pass in our target as well. And since we're scrolling on the X axis, we need to define an axis of X. And then we can just take this value and use it as we normally would. So down here on my motion div, I'm just gonna keep it simple and set this to opacity. Now we should see that as we scroll this through this element, it fades away. Of course, we can use our offset values here as well. So let's try something like end start, start, start. And now our element only starts its fade right as it gets to the end of our element and completes its fade as it completely exits the screen. With just these tips, I've been able to put together all kinds of really cool stuff. Again, you can check all of those out on my website. All of this source code is going to be available as well in the description. I will see you guys next time. Peace.